watching us online all over the world. Yeah, I will not mention the countries anymore. <laughs> but of course, uh, definitely the Philippines, Singapore, Hong Kong, and the Middle East, all of them. <laughs> so, all over. <laughs> and so, happy Saturday to everyone uh, who are here, and even though those people who are watching online, our brothers and sisters who are watching, and um, they're far away from here, and maybe they're uh, having vacation, or some people are just staying at home. And yeah, um, we're just, you know, happy that they're still staying, okay? And uh, we should be thankful because we have a, a, a better bodies than them that we can, you know, go around. But yeah, it's by the grace of God. Don't, uh, don't forget about it. Let's uh, hear some announcement from uh, Sister Rose. Hello everyone. So Operation Christmas Child Love in a Shoebox is uh, definitely here. So the deadline is next Sunday, November 8, 2020. And please bring your uh, gift field boxes and we will pray for the children who will receive these blessings. Okay, so fill up your boxes with the gifts. I'm sure you have already shocked. And so we are going to uh, submit this um, next Sunday. Okay, so a few reminders for our box. Now that you have filled your box with your gifts. So, number one, check the gender and age of your child. So, uh, is he a boy or a girl? And then the age group is 2 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14. So, don't forget to check. And then, next is put the label on the designated part. This is a good box because... Uh, we are told where to put the label, so here, so put your label here, and then next, please do not tie or seal the box, just uh, put the cover, and then you're good, okay? So no strings or tapes, please, so just bring it as is, and it is good. And then, what are we going to do? Go to www.samartanspurs.org slash activate. And then from your stub, so here is your stub, you found it in your box, right? Okay, enter our nine-digit code here. This is the nine-digit code, and then enter there. So you can see the, the, the slide there when you go to Samaritan's first slash activate. And then add to cart, there is a button there, add to cart, click add to cart, and then pay total amount via PayPal, they receive PayPal, or your debit or credit card, and you will designate $9 per box for shipment and all the other ex expenses in, um, in sending the box, okay? So, you will receive a confirmation of your payment and then you are good. Now, let us bring our, let us bring our box next week and we are going to pray for the children who will receive the box, okay? So um, I would just I would just want to share with you the passage um, of the Apostle Paul to the Philippians when they sent um, support financial support to him to support him. And now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. From Philippians four. So as we um, bless other people, the Lord also blesses us and makes us abound so we can be more generous. Amen. Amen. So bring your box next week and follow the, the instructions and we're good. Amen. Praise God. And there will be a ladies fellowship November 7th, Saturday uh, at the uh, Green Acres Park on Halloween. And uh, we have, um, we can hear Dr. Bill Tara. Um, he will be talking on the breast cancer and women's health. Okay, so uh, women, come on Saturday, November 7th, 10 a.m. All right, then, <laughs> so I will repeat again uh, the verse, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 20 is, uh, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, 
so that they are without excuses. So we know what is happening around the world, not only in America, not only in California, not only in Bakersfield, but all over the world. And not only that, the nature will tell us and understand who God is, and we will know him. And there will be no excuse for us whether we know God, we accept him, or not. Let us pray for today. Let's shout this song, please. Let us all stand. Oh God, uh, you created everything. And you know everything that moves on this earth. You know every one of us. You know our names. And you know what we are doing in this world, Lord. So we just ask for your forgiveness this morning. So that we will be Lord in your presence today, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together to praise and worship you once again. And even our brothers and sisters who are with us, we not with us today, Lord. May we give them protection. And may they have opportunity and a chance to hear your message too. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for brothers and sisters who are with us today. May you continue to bless us. And thank you for all the things that you have done to us in the past days. Thank you, Jesus, my precious name. Good morning, church. It's a great thing to see your faces right here in the place of worship, not by a screen. I love it when I see everybody's face in person. And it's a great thing to worship our Lord through our voices because He has done great things in our lives in the past. He's continuing to do it right now, and He will continue to do it in our lives when we are connected to Him. We may not, some, some, some people may say, what's great about this pandemic? But let's know that our God is working, even though we don't see it, He's working, just as the song said. And He has done so much great things that I think it's just fitting that we lift our voices to Him and praise Him for what, for all the things that He has done, because He deserves so much more. So join us as we sing great things today and let us worship the King in all His glory.
Amen. We have such a great God, right? Amen. We strongly believe that as Christians, right? Amen. He has done great things, and um, yes, we do need to remember it. But most of all, we need to remember how great He is. And in times of doubt, remember, He is mighty. He created earth. He created everything. He walked on water. And He died for you and me. And after three days, He rose again. What else can He do to make us believe? Let us see how great He is.
Church. <clears throat> Today's scripture reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 18 through 24. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And then for me, the utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. But that you also may know my affairs, and how I am doing, take thoughts of the beloved brother, and the faithful minister in the Lord, who may always belong to you. Whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs, and that may he, that he may comfort your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us read together. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Microphone cut off. Wow, praise God for uh, lovely fellowship, lovely singing, and gaganda ng microphone natin, ano, technical or. So let me borrow my podium for a while, so I can set my things here. So again, good morning to everyone. Greet your brothers and sisters. Uh, a very welcome to them. Tell them I'm glad that you're here. Can I also borrow this? Okay lang po ba na ibaba ito dito? Hindi naman mag-feedback na kayo rin. Tapang mag-feedback. Okay. Sige. You know, one of the things that I'm praying for, and I'm praying to do a project with, is to have a bigger podium. You know? Ha? Itong microphone ko, no? Ang sa likod daw. Oh, I can borrow this. Thank you, James Pahirama. <laughs> Tinagalog daw si James. Uh, James, can I borrow your program? <laughs> yeah, he understood me. Uh, he understood me. Praise God. So, this morning, 
You know, last week we have celebrated our fourth year church anniversary. Amen. And I believe that was uh, one of its kind because it's a foodless celebration. It's a foodless and yet it's a fruitful celebration. And uh, we have veered off in our regular study on the book of Ephesians. I tackled Galatians uh, chapter, chapter 6. And today we are going to come back to the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to conclude it today, this Sunday. We have veered off with our, uh, with our regular sermon series. But then next year, starting January 2021, I will be preaching from the book of Romans. So you might want to start reading ahead while I'm preparing for it. But for next week, we shall be tackling the book of Philippians. It, has only, has, it only has four chapters. Very good book. Some preachers call it the chapter or the book of joy. So you can actually feel the joy of Paul as he writes this. And then we would end the year with Christmas messages. Amen. So for today, I'd like you to open your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, and we shall go over verses 18 to 24 in a message that I have entitled, Praying with Open Eyes. Praying with Open Eyes. And this morning, I would like us to look at prayer with an open eye, with an open attitude, with an open heart, a teachable spirit, and um, ready to follow and ready to listen and to be, teach, be, to be taught with the Word of God. So this morning, I'm borrowing the outline of Pastor John MacArthur, the skeleton outline of his message, but then the muscles, the fibers, the nerves would be supplied by me. I just borrowed the skeleton. But before we deal with prayer, do you still recall the message that we tackled a week prior to last week's? We talked about the armor of God, right? We talked about the armor of God. And if you would recall that we have enumerated in our, in a way, weaponry list. All the things that the Christian should wear as the armor of God, and yet prayer wasn't part of that list. Prayer wasn't part of that list because prayer is more than that. And it means, it is a means by, by which a Christian would draw his power. Now, we do not add prayer to the list of weapons, but rather prayer is interwoven and inter, it is infused in all the weapons of the believer. So when you gear yourself with a helmet of salvation, you've got to pray. When you gear yourself with a belt of truth, you've got to pray. When you cover yourself, shield yourself with a breastplate of righteousness, you've got to pray. And when you use God's word, the sword of the spirit, that's God's word, you've got to pray. And when you wear the shoes of the gospel moving forward, preaching God's word, you've got to pray. So the armor of God, these are spiritual tools that has to be used with the power of the Holy Spirit. And power happens when we pray. Remember, you might be in a battleship, geared for battle, but if there's no fuel, what would happen? You are an open target in the open sea. We like fancy cars with the leather seats and all those fancy gadgets, but without the fuel, or the battery is, battery is uh, uh, busted, it's nothing but a, a nice metal, you know. It's powerless. So prayer should be in the system of the true child of God. And prayer is like breathing. And uh, you don't need to be, we don't need to be reminded to breathe, isn't it? Who, who among here needs to be reminded, hey, you need to breathe. You don't need to, that, it comes out naturally, right? Well, uh, if you don't pray, it means you are suffocating your spirit. As a matter of fact, Anyone who has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, praying becomes their way of life. Okay? And praying, this is the needed regular activity of someone whose spirit has been revived by the Lord. Okay? So you don't breathe to prove you're alive, right? You're alive, that's why you breathe. Same thing with Christianity, you don't pray to prove that you're a Christian. It's because you're a Christian, that's why you pray. Okay? And when you pray, you don't pray because, uh, you, when, if you're a Christian, you pray because you love God. You pray because you enjoy every moment with God. You don't pray because you want to prove to God that you are being faithful. You don't pray because you want to prove to God that you are being obedient. You pray simply because you believe in God. Amen? 
Now in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says there, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying always. Now the verse talks about the frequency of prayer. It talks about the variety of prayer. It also talks about the manner of prayer and the object of prayer. Now in our verse it says there, praying always. Praying always. Do you know that the Jewish culture, they pray three times a day? They pray in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. Kind of reminds us of the modern day Christian. You might say, oh, we also pray three times a day. Breakfast, <laughs> lunch, and dinner. Right? But you know what? Muslims are even more commendable because they pray five times a day. They pray at dawn, at midday, afternoon, sunset, and nighttime. And every time they pray, they pray facing Mecca. Now the Catholics, with regards to the regular times of prayer, I also remember we are told to go back to our house at 6 p.m. because we need to pray. Uh, we call it the oration. But that's the oration. But in the Bible, praying is more than just an activity. Praying is an expression of one's faith and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Relationship. People in a relationship, they talk. That's why it's so unusual for a husband and wife, they claim to have a people who claim to have a relationship and they don't talk. But family members who are supposed to be close with one another and they don't talk. People, your best friends, your office mates, you claim to have a relationship and you don't talk. But same thing with a Christian, it's so unusual that someone would claim to be a Christian and they don't find it enjoyable to talk with God. They don't even have the desire to talk to God in prayer. So if we claim to be a Christian, if you claim to be a child of God, but you don't want to talk to Him, you don't want to pray with Him, chances are there are no, there is no relationship. Uh, possibly, no relationship at all. Point number one, point number one, prayer is an indicator of one's faith in God. Prayer is an indicator of one's faith with God. So we better check ourselves. Do we love to pray? Do we have to be forced to pray? Or if we forget to pray and then later on realize that we have forgotten to pray, how do we feel about it? Do we feel bad? Hey, I have forgotten to pray or it's just, okay, I will. And then there's no uh, a remarkable feeling of missing it. Some people ask, how do I know if I'm a Christian? Now, one of the indicator is your appetite on prayer. Okay. Do you lack the appetite to pray or do you long for prayer so much so that even in your busy time, you will create a time to pray? But I remember when I was in my 20s, uh, I'm a Christian already then, my, I landed my first job in Makati as a computer salesman. It was so tough, we need to make sales, I need to make presentations to different people, I need to answer questions. But then you go back to the office, you have to give good figures. It was so stressful, it was my first job. And our office is not that big, there's lots of people, and the only private place that I can pray was the bathroom. So I would go to the bathroom, go to sit down to the, you know, the white throne there, close the door, and I would give a quick prayer to the Lord and tell Him my, my heart. Lord, help me, I, I like to pray for this. Just a couple of moments, and then I would remember coming out renewed and ready to face the day. I also read of this Christian, poor Christian mother, a poor mother who was making her living selling items in the open market, public market, palenque, no? sa Tagalog, uh, in the English market. I don't know what other things, wet market perhaps. She has two daughters, they were still small. She would bring them to take care of them while doing business. Then by at the time they were already old enough that she can give them a little bit of responsibilities, she would tell them, okay, watch my items, watch our things, and she would grab a bag blanket, cover her face, and she would pray. That's her private time to the Lord, getting strength from God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 17, perhaps I could request you to make this your memory verse. 
It's very, very long. It's composed of five words. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't even need to open my Bible because I have memorized it. First Thessalonians 5.17, let's read this. Also, say, pray without ceasing. Let's complete the version. Again, pray without ceasing. The Greek word for ceasing means without interruption, without omission, let it be continuous, without ceasing. The verse describes more the quality of communication more than the length of time you take in praying. So the question is, do we enjoy our prayer time with God so much so that we kind of miss time? Like perhaps in your head, I'm going to pray for five minutes. Next thing you know, you've been praying for 20 minutes because you just enjoy talking with God. Well, that's it. Pray without ceasing. Going back to our verse in verse 18, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it also says there, Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, with all prayers and supplication. First one, we talked about the frequency of prayer. Now we're going to talk about the variety of prayer. Some people think that the best way to pray is kneeling down. Some say the best way to pray is raising up your hands. Some say the best way to pray is folding your hands like this. And, and some people don't even know what to pray for, what to say. They look for prayer books and look for prayer books that nearest their heart. And they would pray it, repeat it, retell it to God the best way they can. Some people pray because they are told to pray for prayer items. Now, uh, pray, praying for things. Now, in our church, we have Zoom meetings, we have prayer meetings. We sometimes ask people to pray for things. Hey, pray for this, pray for that. Remember, we do that. Now, when Paul says, pray always with all prayers, it means the way you pray may vary in position. It may vary in method, but you always have, have to pray in sincere heart. With a sincere heart. In the insincere, but sincere heart. You can pray in public. You can pray in private. You can pray verbally, or you can pray in silence, or in loud cries, or quiet whispers. You can pray deliberately, or planned, or spontaneously. You can pray with eyes closed, or you can pray with eyes open. You can pray while driving, but we recommend that you don't close your eyes when you do that. Remember in Nehemiah? When he was in front of the king, and he already had said in his heart that I'm going to mediate for my people, my Jewish people. But he was in front of the king. You cannot simply talk to the king uh, spontaneously. You have to be called. So at one time he was in front of the king. He, perhaps he didn't notice that he had a very sad, sad countenance. And the king called his attention. Hey, Nehemiah, what's the matter? Let's look at the... Uh, account on that. Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 2 to 4. Let me read. Therefore the king said to me, why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid. Verse 3. And said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Then the king said to me, what do you request? And then what happened? So I prayed to God of heaven. Can you see this? Can you look at the timing of Nehemiah's prayer? He was about to talk to God. He was about to respond to him. And yet that time was the time he took for a moment quickly. He prayed to God. Paul says, pray at all times. Well, point number two. Praying does not need an occasion in order for it to happen. Praying does not need an occasion in order for it to happen. A lot of us pray because there's an occasion. There's a problem. There's an accident. There's a mishap. You know? Or there's a commotion. That's the time you pray. But when you pray, you don't need an occasion. You can simply pray and, Hi, Lord. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Lord God. I'm alive today. Right? Pray. You don't need an occasion. We don't even pray sometimes when great things happen and we are not thankful, but we should pray all the time. Now, another thing that we can get from those uh, verses, 
Praying is all about the position of your heart more than the position of your body. Pray at all times. It's more of the position of your heart more than the position of your body. In verse 18, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, it says there, Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Being watchful. Being watchful literally means being alert. Or in other words, we have to know what we are praying for. But do you remember the days? Uh, I remember during the, those days, people would make fun of how the Miss Universe contestants would answer. And they would be asked, what is your wish? And they would say, I wish for world peace. Mm -hmm. Of course, we, all of us wish for world peace, but can we be more specific? Sometimes a lot of us would pray like we are Miss Universe contestants. Lord, I pray for world peace. I mean, there's nothing bad about that. But when we pray, we have to touch base with the reality. We have to know the specific items that is needed by our brethren. Amen, Puba? The actual situation of your friends and your loved ones. You have to know what's going on with one another so that you can be specific in your prayers. John chapter 14, verses 30 to 14, it says here. Sabi ni Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, 13 to 14. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. The word anything means something that is certain. Certain people, certain events, certain circumstances. Ask anything. But you knew it to be no anything. So that when you ask something, anything in his name, the Father may be glorified in the specific thing that you have asked for. But of course, you have to ask with the spiritual common sense. Amen? Like I remember this CCTV camera in the Philippines caught this thief going um, on top of this high fence. He went on the other side. He was about to rob the house. The owner of that house but he didn't know there was a cctv camera and then by the time he landed on the floor about to rub you know what he did he did this <laughs> he, he did that it was like a quick prayer what do you think he's trying to say lord protect me as i rub this house and that is what he was saying we don't do that we, we don't pray lord i'm going to sin right now please protect me as i sin you know when we pray for something pray for anything Use your spiritual common sense. Amen? So, specific prayer results in the specific glory for God. Such that when you pray for someone specific, praying for a specific thing in that for that person, if the Lord answers his specific request, then you can glorify God specifically. Amen? Point number four, praying involves caring enough to know what to pray for about others. Okay? Praying involves caring enough to know what to pray for in others. Let's go back in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. It also says there, Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now this time it talks about the object of prayer. The object of prayer is others. Spend more time praying for others. Amen. When we want to be improved as a person, you know you can be better improved as a person if you spend more time praying for others than spending more time praying for yourself. Better let other people pray for you. But request other people to pray for you, but as far as you are concerned, I am concerned, pray for others. Well, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, says there, and for me, now here is Paul saying, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Do we have the same version? Yes. But version of? Well, that's Paul. Now Paul tells the Christians in Ephesus, hey, pray for me. So as far as their list of others is concerned, Paul is considered in that others list. In a way, he's also teaching them, hey, pray for others. Pray for one another besides praying for yourself. And look at the level of trust 
Paul puts in the hands of the Christians in Ephesus. He tells them, hey, pray for me. He has let them into his life. They have to know something about him, enough to care for him, enough to know what to pray for him. Now, of course, there might be things that you want to keep for yourself. You want to keep it a secret. But try to tell people, let people in so that we would know, people would know what to pray for in your life. In the case of Paul, this is what he said. In verse 21 to 22, But that you also may know my affairs, and how I am doing, Tychicus, a beloved brother, and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs, that he may comfort your hearts. Amen? Point number five. It is never selfish to request for prayers from others. It's okay to say, hey, please pray for me. It's okay about, uh, to do that. Requesting for prayer is also another way of promoting the love we should have for one another. As a matter of fact, this should always be practiced in churches, in our church. But notice Paul's prayer request. He wrote his prayer when he was in prison. And in verse 20, he said that he is an ambassador in chains. But what was his prayer request? His prayer request was pray for boldness. He did not say, please pray that I can get out. Can you see that? Please pray that I will be free, although that's not bad in itself. But then he prayed for boldness. That utterance might be given to him so that when he opens his mouth, he can come proclaim the gospel. Now, brothers and sisters, we love and we care for people. But it looks like in many of the prayer meetings, Prayer requests are organ recital prayers. You know what organ recital prayers are. Hey, please pray for my kidney. Pray for my gallbladder. Pray for my intestine. You know, pray for my joints. All the all the organ donors, we will pray for that. You know, there's nothing wrong about praying for your organs, but there is something wrong when you don't pray for your spiritual life. Diba? All the time you just pray for the organs. As a matter of fact, when your spiritual life is good. Okay. Uh, I if your spiritual life is unbalanced, it's not good, but your organs are functioning well and you don't pray, then, then something is wrong with that. Or there's also something wrong when your spiritual life is messed up simply because your prayer for the organs are not answered. And your spiritual life gets uh, messed up with that. Do you remember Paul? Paul says, I have this thorn in the flesh. I have been requesting the Lord to remove but he is not removing it. He has not been answering it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 9, this was his conversation telling to the Christians in Corinth, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than the power of Christ may rest upon me. So he has a thorn in the flesh. He had prayed to the Lord to be re for it to be removed. Lord, this is annoying. Please remove it from me. But what was the Lord's answer? You know, my grace, I have given you enough grace. My grace is sufficient for you. In a way, God's answer to him is a summary of being contented with what the Lord gives you. Somehow it gives us a picture of what we should be weighing in about praying for spiritual matters and physical matters. We should weigh in more on praying about spiritual matters. Because the gains that was answered in your spiritual life, you eventually will bring that to the afterlife in heaven. As compared to the gains that you get from answer in the physical sense, you know the body, what will happen to the body? You will just leave it here on earth. Not to mention, eventually the Lord will give us glorified bodies. So pray more on the spirit, spiritual aspect. Now what was the attitude of Paul with regards to the Lord not answering his prayer about that thorn in the flesh. 
he has a very mature and commendable Christian outlook, attitude. Verse 10, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When we are so much so aware of our physical weakness, then we can get to try to trust in the Lord more. Amen? So the admonition today is let us grow in our prayer life. Let us not put confidence in prayer itself, but let us put confidence and rest on the one who hears our prayers. Amen? Why don't we all bow down our heads, close our eyes. Bow down our heads and close our eyes. And like to talk to the people here with us in, in our fellowship hall and to those who are listening to us, tune in in our online broadcast. I would like to ask you today, if you die today, I would like to ask you, do you know, do you know where your soul is going? Alam mo ba kung saan ka pupunta pag ikay namatay? Will you go to heaven? Or somehow you felt like you're gonna go there on hell? Or you're not sure where you're going? You're hoping, I hope my good works are enough to give me a lot of good points in heaven and the Lord would weigh in my good works over my bad works and He would say, okay, you're good, you're past. I mean, is that how you feel right now? But you know, brothers and sisters, as far as the Word of God is concerned, which Word of God is very reliable Word of God, do you know that you can be sure of heaven? To the point that you can also be sure that God loves you. In John chapter 16, chapter, chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And what's the phrase there? Whosoever believes on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I, if you want to decide, I want to start believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So how do you do that? You tell it to Him in prayer. I mean, uh, it's not joining the religion, joining the Baptist church, or joining a religious club, or starting a, a marathon on prayer. No, you talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your trust in Him. Tell Him, Lord, I cannot save myself, but you promised that anyone who believes in you, you will save. So I claim that promise. Uh, claim it now. Be my Lord and Savior. So while your heads are bowed down, I'd like to give this opportunity to everyone who would like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a one-time prayer. Okay? You don't need to pray this again and again because your, your salvation is not based on that prayer but based on someone who hears your prayer. So it's a one-time prayer that would start up your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to do that, follow me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. I believe in your word that whoever trusts you you will save. So come into my heart and be my Savior. I entrust my life in you. In Jesus' name, Amen. While your heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you have truly said that prayer to Jesus and you have believed with all your heart, brothers and sisters, don't doubt His promise. Don't doubt His promise. Believe and start that wonderful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now my second challenge or invitation to all of you. If you are a Christian, if you are a Christian, I believe we should always pray for others. So for this week alone, for this week, I would like you to do the following if you're a Christian. I'd like you to listen very well. In your heart, in your heart and in your mind, I would like you to choose three people and I would like you to pray for them. Three people. Now, I will not ask you who they are. It's between you and the Lord. But choose three people that you would like to pray today. They could be someone here in the church, someone out in the, out, not with us in the church, or a friend, or a community leader, or anyone. Doesn't matter. Pray for them. Then after praying for them, I would like you to text or email them. Send him or her an encouraging message. I have prayed for you. Can you do that? Do that within this week. Now, if you pray for your pastor, you don't need to text me. You don't need to email me. But I wish that you pray, you would have to pray for somebody else. 
Make the person feel that you have prayed for them. And do that this week starting today. Now, Pastor, can I pray for three more people? Of course you can, but follow the rules. When you pray for anyone, okay, minimum of three, text them, let them know that you prayed for them. Amen? So let's close this portion in a word of prayer before I ask the praise team for our closing song. Thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful time that you have given to us, reminding us about prayer. Lord, it is such a great, great and wonderful thing to realize that the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God of the universe, our Creator, would want to have time with us. That all we need to do is to come to you and save time and have that attitude of prayer to call on your name anytime, wherever we are, whenever we can. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful gift of open communication with you. Thank you for opening the gates of heaven for anyone who has trusted in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for everyone right now. Help us, Lord, to continuously pray, to grow in you, to grow in relationship with you. And we pray, Lord God, also this week, to the people that we will pray for, and to the people that we will engage with. We pray, Lord God, that they come to know you. Give us the opportunity, Lord God. The same boldness that Paul requested to have a prayer for. The same boldness we pray for us. That we will be bold to speak and share your word to people. I'd like to request everyone to stand up, please. And we will end in a word of benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God and to our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to him be glory and majesty, dominion and power both, now and forevermore, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Hello church. As we do our closing song, I just want to give you the verse. Um, today is 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As we say thank you, Lord, it really, like Pastor said, our daily life, at any time, any place, anywhere, we thank God. We pray. Uh, diba? Pray without ceasing. So, in our life, just a simple thank you, Lord, from the gratefulness of our hearts. Can we sing that today?